Are you? Good morning. Um, we're light this morning, but um, high spirited. <laughs> um, as you may or may not know, um, Reverend Jeremy and Lauren and Jonah are ill this morning. Fortunately, Micah is not ill, so um, there's that. But anyway, um, we would like to welcome back the Reverend Jeff Gwynn. Um, if y'all if y'all were here last summer, he um, was with us. Anyway, um, we're grateful to have him with us here again. We're grateful to have Tom back um, from his travels. And um, we do have a few announcements that I would like to make. Um, we're still doing the school supply drive for Taylor Ray Elementary School. Um, there are supply lists um, in the... Narthex and in the, uh, I guess there's supply lists in the parish hall as well. Um, but anyway, there's collection bins in both places and that will be through July. So please be generous um, for those children that are in need. Um, we, the, the, we have Episcopal night out with the Space Cowboys. Um, Scott and I got tickets. It would be great to see other people out there. That's on July 26th. You can get online and purchase your tickets, and you need to do so by July 22nd. It'll be a fun night. Um, and then next week, next Sunday, will be our 4th of July celebration. We'll have hamburgers and hot dogs. Um, we're going to have a bake-off for apple pie and homemade ice cream, a watermelon seed spitting contest, all kind of fun. So make plans to be here next Sunday. And then um, uh, this is a little further out, but July 28th will be our Christmas in July celebration. And so um, don't forget that. And just a reminder that um, uh, our stewardship committee is appreciative of all of y'all's um, donations of time, talent, and treasure. Um, summers, a lot of times people are on vacation and going and blowing, um, but just a reminder that the church is still, we still got to keep the lights on here, so make sure you get your pledges in on time. Um, I think that's all for now. Are there any other announcements for the good of the people that I may have left out? Okay, Daughters is not going to meet in July. Daughters of the King will not meet in July. Um, and if, if you're new here today, we just want to say welcome. Um, <clears throat> please join us for fellowship afterwards. And as always, if you're um, a baptized Christian, we welcome you. Um, we welcome you at the the uh, at the communion rail. And um, if you would like to not receive communion, please come forward um, for a blessing and just cross your arms across your chest when you're at the communion rail. Um, thank you very much, and let us worship the Lord. Good morning. I wanted to make sure the mic is working. Are we working? Not yet. You can't hear me. Right there. That's one of the things I wanted to make sure. Can we turn up the, the volume? Summer. Oh, this part. Thank you. Good start so far. Eh? Hmm. I'll adjust that later. Oh, is it going to work? Is that enough? Okay, all right, fair enough. I'll, I won't fiddle anymore. Good morning. My name's Father Jeff. I'm glad to be here. What I want to do is just simply invite you all together as a people into this space. We come from different places, things different in our minds, our mornings were all different. And just to be here, this place is special, not because the chairs are blue or comfortable or because the lighting's nice or whatever. It's been dedicated, it's been dedicated for God's purposes in our lives. It has been, um, it is special because of who's sitting here. You come here with an intention. I don't know what your exact intention is, but your general intention is to meet with God to be with God, to sense God's presence, perhaps to hear God's whisper, some sort of movement in your heart, some sort of thought that you had that you didn't come in with, and to leave here slightly changed, slightly renewed, more hope, 
clearer, clearer sense of who you are when you walk out of here than where you are right now. So I just want to take a moment, give us just a few, a little bit of time here. Tom will pick up with the prelude in a bit. Just, you might uh, close your eyes, you can keep them open if you like. I invite you to close your eyes. I'm going to be quiet here and just maybe say an intention before the Lord or just be quiet and be still. Spirit.
We continue on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seen to death, the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. The first lesson is a reading from 1 Samuel. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered at Soch, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soch and Azekah, the Evistamim. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had graves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then he will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. 
Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. And David heard him. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine, Saul said to David. You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant is used to keep sheep for his father, and wherever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from, his, from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will give me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor and put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them, and then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David. With his shield bearer in front of him, when he, the Philistine, and when the Philistine looked down and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand when the Philistine drew nearer to meet David David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine David put his hand in his bag took out a stone slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead the stone sank into his forehead And he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Trust in you, for you 
The second lesson is a reading from 2 Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is a day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way. <clears throat> Sorry. So, they, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see. We are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Would you please pray with me? Just a brief prayer for Jeremy and his family. Lord, we pray for Jeremy and his family that they would return to health soon. Give them a peace and calm, calm day today. Renew their strength. And open our ears and our, the eyes of our hearts to hear you, to be nudged by you, to be moved by you in some way. That our love for you may be more perfect and our love for one another may also be more fully expressed. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Well, it was just yesterday, around noontime, that Jeremy called me and said that he and his family were ill. Here we are. The day before, Friday, my wife and I, two things happened. One, my, my wife and I got back from a, a rather extensive vacation on the easternmost part of this country. So several weeks, we returned home, we had our dog, car had been packed down for, for a long time, and we're trying to resettle in. So that's one thing that happened on Friday, just getting back from vacation. Uh, the second thing that happened on Friday was, we got a, my wife got a call actually from uh, our 27-year-old son, we have three. And uh, he called to share his latest exciting news, namely, that he had found a lawyer who was going to help him reduce the amount he would have to repay for his student loans. Hmm. When Karen and I got around to discussing that very thing, this new thing that Carter was excited about, it was Saturday morning. We hadn't had a chance to do it Friday night. So, but it was Friday morning, like, or Saturday morning, like early, 4.30, because we both woke up with a sort of twisted stomach, like, oh boy, this doesn't sound good. I'm not sure this new friend, this lawyer friend, who only works virtually, is really going to help my son. We both had a pit in our stomachs. We both felt he was being led astray, helping him go wrong. Our son has large student loans from graduate school. 
the lawyer was telling him that a loophole that just a very few people knew about, but he had the inside scoop on, that he was sharing with him, that there was a legitimate way for our son to pay back less than half of his loan. He needed to start giving him some money. So my son has already committed, he signed, gave him $600. That's to start. To us, this sounded a lot like financial fraud, both on the part of the lawyer and what he was asking our son to do. We both felt we needed to discuss this further with our son in greater detail, and we both worried that as we got into some conversation with him about this, because he's all excited that he's going to save hundreds of thousands of dollars, that it could create distance in our relationship. A relationship we cherished as for 27 years as close and harmonious and supportive. I'll come back to that. <laughs> now, what can I easily identify with in the scriptures and in the hymns today? Each, in its own way, displays some kind of difficulty in relationships. So we start with Goliath, the Philistine, taunting Israel to war. One man against one man, a duel that would result in one person's death and a whole people being surrendered and submitted to another people. Not happy times. Now, for the psalmist, we're accustomed to hearing psalmists crying out about antagonists. Today, we hear these words, Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. Some things aren't going well for this fellow. St. Paul, in our third reading, lists many troubles that arise from false accusations, from his antagonists. He writes, as servants of God, dot, 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 we are treated as impostors. We are beaten and imprisoned. And the list of difficulties goes on. You can read them yourself. When we get to the gospel, Jesus has an occasion to upbraid his disciples who were frightened in a boat in a storm, as you and I would be. Come on. Have you still no faith? He does this many times. We all know the words that Peter uh, later spoke in this gospel and what Jesus said back to him, a difficult conversation. Uh, what you just said, Peter, is the voice of our enemy. Get behind me, Satan. Choice words, sharp rebuke. Relationships, tough conversations. How do we manage these? How well do we manage these? Are things getting easier in our current world? Is peaceful disagreement? Is hearing one another? Is respecting each other in disagreement and coming to reconciliation? Are these getting easier these days? It's always been. Life is hard. Life is hard without enemies, without antagonists, without difficulties coming our way, without someone trying to trip us up or set a trap for us. Life is hard. Some people, not always intentionally in the way it happens, some people really set us up. Luring us into troubled waters. We can't always avoid these face-offs. Sometimes we can duck and we can get away from it, but not always. How do we handle these people or circumstances that antagonize us and stir up negative emotions that almost certainly will create rifts? Today I'm going to be really practical with you. I want to say something hopeful, I think I will, but also helpful. As St. Paul says, we are called to be God's ministers in the world. And I'm going to share with you, briefly, what's helped me. You can apply this to any relationship you have. It could be parent to child, spouse to spouse, neighbor to neighbor, employee to boss, boss to employee. 
I notice in your bulletin your core values. You want to be Christ-centered. I hope this does that. You want to be empowered to be the person God wants you to be, to be God's minister in the world. I hope this does that. So how do we manage these things? Well, the first thing is it depends on what outcome you want. Of course, with my son, the outcome we want is for some kind of ongoing conversation that gets as detailed as it needs to be for us to agree on something that would be a mutually beneficial thing for him and for us. That we would be still close, harmonious, and supportive. And he would see it that way. So there are, hmm, I'm going to draw a picture for you. It's going to be a boxer's ring. I hope this image helps you remember what I'm saying. So there, in a boxer ring, there's four different corners, right? And usually, two people come on out, they're sitting on a chair, the chair's taken away, a stool, and they come out with boxing gloves on, and they begin to do this. They're ready for a fight. That's the first thing you can do when someone has tweaked you. I got tweaked when I heard my son say, yeah, it's really good, he's gonna help me out. I wanna strangle the lawyer I would like to like say, you know what, he moved to California or something else. He, he died in a heart attack. I, would, I want him not to be in my son's life. So as a boxer, I want to punch that guy and knock him out. Knock him out of the ring. He's no longer part of your life. Now to do that, my son may feel like I'm knocking him out of the ring. That's one option, is to come out and want to, this is the win. I'm going to win this. I'm going to be convincing. I'll raise my voice if I need to. I'm going to be quite pedantic and fatherly if I have to. I'm going to get my wife to help me if I have to. I'm going to win this, this conversation. It's too important. He could risk his career. He could risk having a huge bill to pay when he doesn't expect it down the road. All kinds of things could go bad. So in this win situation, I know that that guy coming out from, at, at me, he also has a win mentality. He wants to get my son's business and so forth. And whatever it is, there's, there's a situation where it's going to be either you or me is going to get our blocks knocked off. That's one way to handle it, is to sort of feel that rise of anger and frustration and mm, danger. and act out of that. Now there's another way to handle that same situation. Corner one where you say like, okay, this is not gonna be pretty. Someone's going down and it could be me. You can say, I'm leaving town, which is what Jesus did. He didn't face his opponent. When he determined that Jerusalem, in Jerusalem with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, when he determined that they were out to get him and they did that early on, and he could hear them, he could hear what was in their hearts, he could also hear their conversations. He went to Galilee of the Gentiles. He got out of town. He may have come back, but as soon as he saw trouble, he got out of town. Here he is in a boat in a lake in the Sea of Galilee, far away from Jerusalem. This was a choice he made. You don't have to take up your gloves. You can just not show up to the ring. Sometimes that's possible. Sometimes it's the very best choice. If what you see in your confrontation is you can't, like what's the percentage of it going well? If it looks really, really low, try to ch choose that, sec that, 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 that posture, if you will. Leave town. Don't, don't put yourself in that situation. Okay, so that's, that's, that's corner number one. I'm going to move you now to corner number two. It's a different posture. You're going to come out for a different reason. The outcome you're seeking is different. So when you've got someone antagonizing you and punching you and jabbing you and, you know, what you can do is decide, the outcome you're looking for is just simply to stop that. And one way to stop that is when you get jabbed, when you get poked, you poke back. You say, you know, this is not okay. What you're doing to me is not okay. And I'm going to make you feel in some way, not unfairly, not unjustly, not over the top. I'm just going to push back on what you're doing. I'm going to make you hurt. You're going to make me hurt, I'm going to make you hurt. I don't like to do this. This is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I don't like to do this, but this is, you're not going to stop. 
I can tell if I look like a wimp, you're going to walk all, all over me. It's going to happen and happen again and again and again. This is the draw. The hope is, the, the outcome you're looking for is, that person, if they take me on, is going to hurt. And both will see at some point that this is not happening, this is no fun. We're both getting hurt, and the person stops. Sometimes it means I'm calling my lawyer if this doesn't stop. You just push back enough. That's draw. Win, knock them out, get knocked out, <laughs> or just duck. Number two is you, you settle on a draw. You can't beat this, but you can perhaps stop it with the right kind of pressure. The third option is this, and all of these, see, what you have to decide before you enter into the ring is what's your outcome? That's the first thing you decide. What is the preferred outcome? What's the ideal outcome? And shoot for that. So this is the win-win situation. You go in wanting to be a listener to understand that person's perspective. To the extent it's possible, if that person's going to give it to you, let's talk. So you don't even, you just, you don't even bring in your boxing gloves. As you're, as you're there, you walk and perhaps you take them off as you approach the center of the ring saying, I come in peace. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to understand your point of view better. And it's, if it's possible, if you are peaceable about it and humble, and patient with this person and give it some time and not rush to solutions, possibly you could end up with a win-win situation. That, that is, that you're going to give that person something that they're looking for or afraid of losing. And in return, you're going to get something that you need as well. So you're going to expose your need. What is your need in this situation? What are you seeking? And then. It may just be that it's, a, it's an agreement because the both person's situation is improved by the agreement. And peace happens around you rather than a fight. And we don't have a war in our midst because two people are squaring off, but that there's a peaceable agreement. That's a possibility. If that's your objective, then, then you're in for a longer haul, a more patient, more humble approach. It's not always open to you. That's win-win. <sighs> yes. <laughs> the war is over. Truce. Now, there's a fourth part of the ring, and this is where Jesus comes in, by the way. Actually, Jesus is in all of these. Jesus is in all of these. He did all of these positions, depending on the circumstances and what he thought was appropriate. The fourth place in the ring to come out is not with boxing gloves on. It's, um, it's a win over approach. You're going to win over your, the person who's making themselves your enemy. And what that means is you're not just looking to get something out of it, to have a transaction that works for both of you, but you're looking in the process of working it out. Your posture, your intention is to be transformed in your relationship, your, your attitudes, and your behaviors towards your perceived enemy. You change. That person is now not a person you hate and want to annihilate. It's a person you love and want to help and want to be a brother or sister with. This was the approach, of course, of Gandhi and of Martin Luther King. The sheriff across from him who approved of or winked at lynchings in the county, the approach in this fourth place is not to annihilate or to jail or to hurt the sheriff. It's to win him over so that his eyes open and he says, you've won me over. Your kindness, your gentleness, your patience, the love I feel from you, I now, I now get it. I'm not going to be for lynchings anymore. I'm not going to wink anymore. I'm going to be on your team and work for this good cause because God doesn't want lynchings. That's the win over. 
the highest goal in this is transformation. Winning a brother or sister to join things constructively. You both change as individuals and your relationship changes. So let me conclude with this. Back to Carter, my son, my 27-year-old son. I thought long and hard about all the things I could say. <laughs> Boy, I had a whole backpack full of ammunition. But I decided to ask him one simple question, the essential question. As I saw it and my wife saw it, we agreed on it, and not clutter it up with any other heft. I wanted to put it in there <laughs> to convince him one question. And I just simply asked, how is this not simply making a fraudulent financial claim about your income? When I asked that question, in a phone call, he called us the next morning, I texted him. He called and said, you know what, Dad, it never occurred to me that this was fraud. I said, but what you're doing one year and then year after year isn't true, is it? Well, but, but, no, I get, you know, Dad, I just hadn't seen it this way. That was the outcome we were hoping for. Thank God. So in this, determine your objective. Remember your options and ask God to help you with strength and wisdom and humility and self-control. Amen. On page 358, please stand and join me in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on form, form one, can be found on page 383 in the Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the holy church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Richmond and Fort Bend County, for every city and community, 
and for those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For David and family, Josh, Susan, Ruthie, Alisoon, Zachary, Reverend Jeremy and family, David, Betsy, Brenda, Heather, Julie, Brendan, Juno, Sharon, Joan, Ronald, Rick, Barbara, Jamie, Terry, Bill, Ella, Amy, D, Keith, Bella, Barbara, Tom, Nephi, Gloria, Fidelis, Alan, Chica, Lydia, Pamela, Marco, Peg, Nancy, Faye, and Chorte, and for those whom the daughters of the king pray, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for the prisoners, captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Mark and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, Help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Merciful, Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet your neighbors in the peace of Christ. God's peace.
Do we have any birthdays to celebrate? Nearest Sunday, too. Come forward, please, and we'll offer our prayers for you for another year of God's grace and goodness upon you. Birthday? Yes. Birthday? Yes. No, birthday. Birthday is the 40th. All right. What's your first name? Christine. Thank you, Christine. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Christine, as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Read that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have an anniversary to celebrate? Is there anyone here who's absent? <laughs> Let's pray for the absent. O God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech thee graciously to behold and bless those whom we love, now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant, grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to thee, may be bound together by thy love in the communion of thy Holy Spirit and in the fellowship of thy saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
an encouraging word as we continue. So from the time we began until now, and we continue, what you are doing with your body and your mind and your heart by being in this room is you're doing the highest thing a human being can do. You're doing the thing that you're, for which your body, your mouth, your ears, and your eyes, and your heart, and your soul were created to do, to be in the presence of their maker, their redeemer, their savior, to be in the presence of God, and to listen to God, to speak with God, to confess your errors or limitations to God, to be honest with God, to be together to strengthen one another. You are doing, your eyes are seeing things, your ears are hearing things, you're taking in things that are from God. And that's true here at the table. Do this in remembrance of me. You're doing the highest thing you can do as a human being in Christ's name. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessings. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy, to fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper, he took he, with them, he took bread, and when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, 
And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming and glory, and offering to you from the gifts you've given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, upon these gifts, sanctify them, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, patriots, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, sing. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Jesus loves you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
I think of this time as a sort of liminal space where we are actually in the nearer presence of the Lord just because of what we've been through and where our eyes and ears and heart are tuned to. So let's just take some time that we're in communion with God and each other right now. And um, perhaps you'd like to pray, perhaps you'd like to say something, nothing in, at all, no words, just be in God's presence. But perhaps there's a thanksgiving you want to offer or a prayer, a petition you want to offer silently. This would be a time when I think that you're very apt to be praying rightly before God and that our prayers somehow in some mystery make a difference. So this is a, just a moment of prayer here, silent prayer. continue to pray the prayer on page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you, you have, have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love you and you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Hear the pattern of, of Paul, St. Paul. He says, we are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, hardship, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. As we go forth, let those, those characteristics be part of us. In the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you be blessed now and always. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us go forth into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay.
don't have my buddy. Jonah and Bruce. I'm smell the roses. <laughs> <laughs> 